Today I want to introduce to you an incredible new tool that FamilySearch has released for use and that is their labs function. Now a little while ago, maybe a year ago or so, they had released a wills and deeds experimental search page which allowed you to use um, OCR or optical character recognition technology to look through wills and deeds in the United States and for a little while I used this website and it was incredible and then out of nowhere they took away availability for people to use it and this was really really disappointing because the technology showed so much promise and was leaps and abounds above a lot of the um, technologies that are currently used in genealogy so I was really excited when they finally returned to it with their use of the full text search now if you look at all of the labs, you'll see there's a ton of different types of labs. There's the merge analysis view, family group trees, a whole bunch of other things, but the one I really want to focus on is the full text search. So what this does is it takes a series of records that are untranscribed, unindexed, that exist in the family search archives. And it uses essentially artificial intelligence to transcribe these documents. So you're able to search through pages and pages of text without a transcriber going through and copying it over word by word. Now right now this only exists for a certain segment of records. It's mostly um, land records, deeds, some wills, things of this nature. But if you can really take a step back and think about the future of genealogy and the future of AI, this tool has the potential to completely revolutionize genealogy. Because when you think about it, if you can ha take any series of records and have it be transcribed automatically without a person needing to do it, you'll be able to look through essentially any type of record and be able to find the person you're looking for. In the past, you had to go to a library, look through an index, find maybe where your ancestors' records were, and then you had to painstakingly look page by page through them. With the internet, family search, okay, introduced a lot of scanned digital copies of these, so you now could do it from the comfort of your own home. But you still had to go through every page one at a time. Now, as someone who has family who came from various countries who spoke different languages. I'm really excited for where this is going to go when it comes to, for instance, transcribing documents in a variety of languages and the ability to instantaneously translate them from one language to another. I mean, just think about the number of records that any given person probably existed in, be them local tax registers or wills or all sorts of things and most of them you probably aren't able to find right now. A because they're either not online or B it would just take digging through too many documents to find that specific line of text that mentions your ancestor. But with this optical character recognition we are talking about a complete revolution in genealogy. Now I want to show you a couple of examples of this, specifically with regards to the video that I had done on Elliot Smith, because I looked for some of his ancestors in these documents, and I'm going to show you what I found. Here we have his ancestor, Louis Galter, who lived in Montana for a period of time, and as you can see, there are tons of deeds here that mention him, if we open one of them up, we can take a look and see the land transfers that happened with him. And while these deeds don't necessarily contain very much by way of direct genealogical evidence, they do contain signatures from potential family members, and they also help to give us a better sense of what these people were up to when they lived in the places that they did. For instance, if you're able to find land records from one county in Montana and then you see that 
a few years earlier, that same person shows up in a land record in another city nearby, you can get a sense that this person may have moved around from city to city, and it works in a similar way as directories, except is a lot more fleshed out because you're learning about the actual dealings that this person was going through. Another ancestor of Elliot Smith's that I found records for was Adonijah Smith. As you can see here in Meigs County, Ohio, there were a number of deeds and records that mentioned him. And this is a lot of fun, especially in a, when someone has a name that's not super common. You know, if the person's name was John Smith, you really have to use the filters up here at the top of the page that allow you to break it down by collection, year, place, and record type in order to have any shot of finding the person you're looking for. But the less common the name becomes, the easier it is. And you can, of course, use the quotation marks around the person's name in order to search for the exact variation of that. I also tried it for some of my own ancestors with some mixed results just because there weren't too many documents that mentioned them. Um, not an ancestor, but a distant cousin of mine, Rabbi Solomon Hirsch Sonenschein. I was able to find some documents that uh, mentioned him under the name S.H. Sonenschein, him and his wife living in St. Louis, Missouri. And there were, of course, some indexes for my Paley family living in Albany, my great-grandfather, Louis Paley. Now, none of these documents contained anything that taught me anything new, but by familiarizing myself with this optical character recognition, my hope is that as the technology improves, as the number of registers that this technology is applied to expands, pretty soon you'll be able to look through countless examples of mentions of your relative, you know, maybe they were the signatory to a wedding and they happen to be the cousin of the person getting married. That can be helpful. You know, you, right now you can search for New York vital records by the name of the bride, the groom, and the bride and groom's parents. But what you can't search by yet is the witnesses. And sometimes the witnesses are family members and finding them on that record can help you uncover a family mystery. So if these vital records start becoming transcribed as well, you're looking at almost an unlimited source of ancestral resources. So anyways, this is the introduction to Family Search Labs. If you have family, especially ones who lived in America, you know, in the 1800s and before, I highly recommend you take a look at this. Search for some of your relatives, see if they pop up living in the places that you know that they were, and you might be able to uncover some interesting gems that you would not have otherwise. Eventually, I do plan on taking a look at some of the other labs. I know they're all kind of experimental. The other ones didn't seem as useful as this one, but, you know, keep your eyes peeled because the technology is moving as we speak, and you never know what's going to come to the forefront.